In this video, I'll tell you why the less visible changes to the new Shimano S-Fire RC903 road cycling shoes make them among the best road shoes we've tested and one of those just a small handful you should consider if you want racing level performance and long ride comfort in a single pair of shoes. Hi, I'm Steve from In The No Cycling, the independent website and YouTube channel that helps you decide what cycling gear to get next and where to get it. In addition to telling you what's new and the same about these top of the line Shimano S-Fire road shoes and what I liked and didn't like about them, I'll also show you how they compare to top of the line shoes from Specialized, CD, Bontrager, and those from a half a dozen other brands we've tested. I'll also give you a link to my comprehensive and compared review of all the best road cycling shoe models that will help you choose the right ones for you. Okay, let's roll. From just looking at them quickly, it seems like Shimano has made only superficial, small modifications in these S-Fire RC903 model shoes compared to the 902s that came before them. First, you'll see at the top some tiny eyelets that guide the laces instead of the plastic guides on the RC902s. You also get a sock-like fabric running atop your toes instead of the same upper material that continues across that same area in the older 902 shoes. There's also some slightly different venting perforations around the top and around the sides of the shoes. Both shoes have the same size heel bumpers and, and profile, although in the 903 there's both uh, some raised ribs uh, along those heel bumpers, perhaps to give you more protection. And the finish is a little bit shinier on the 903s, also perhaps to give you a more reflective surface. And a lot of the other things look and indeed are exactly the same. They both have these Boa dials that have nice small increments of uh, retention. Uh, they're the L12 top of the line models that Boa makes. They both have this crossover strap uh, across the top here, the top dial that for me reduces any hot spots up there that you can get if you only have the laces crossing that middle section. The outsole vents both at the top here and in, at the back uh, of the heel are exactly the same. And as best I can tell the outsole materials that run along the bottom and the upper materials are exactly the same. And uh, these new RC903s you also get the same insoles with three different thickness arch pads that you can uh, velcro in or out to uh, give you more arch height. That's consistent on all the high level Shimano shoes, both for road and gravel. And the weights look to be exactly the same. I weighed on my scale 244 grams for the new RC903 in a size 43 versus 242 grams for the, uh, the last pair. Of course, that's without uh, the cleats here. So it's essentially identical. Even the name has changed very little, one digit, perhaps suggesting this is not a, a major change in shoes. But once I put my feet into the new RC903 shoes, or went below the surface, if you will, and went out for a number of rides, I noticed there are two major changes in this new version of the S-Fire shoes. And those changes make them as good as any I and my fellow testers have ridden. In fact, they are better than most road cycling shoes we've ridden for both fast, hard group rides and races and long days of endurance riding. Before I continue, let me tell you that you can find links to my complete review of these Shimano S-Fire RC903 shoes and where you can get them and to many of the other things I mentioned in this video in the description box below. And make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing here. It will really help the channel and spread the word to your fellow cycling enthusiasts. Okay, let me talk about the two major changes Shimano made to these new RC903 shoes that I feel make such a big difference. The first change makes the RC903 shoes comfortable on long rides. And by long rides, I'm talking about three hours plus, rides that you might do for a Grand Fondo or a Hard Century. 
The RC902s fit like a glove. And they were comfortably snug from the heel cup up to the midfoot and forefoot and in the toe box area. When dialed down, the shoes moved in total concert with my feet, the same way my socks do. That, along with a stiff outsole, gives me great efficiency transferring power from my feet and legs to my pedals and into my drive chain. But my toes didn't have a lot of room to wiggle around in the RC902s. Now that's not an issue if I'm riding hard for two or three hours on a group ride or event where I'm really focused on speed. On a ride like that, I don't have a lot of time to stretch, to ease up, to wiggle my toes, to adjust my jersey, to take in the scenery, etc. I'm riding hard, and that's all I'm focused on. And my toes weren't constricted in the prior RC902 model, such that I would feel uncomfortable on that two or three hour hard ride. But on a longer endurance ride, I do want to ease up from time to time. I do want to stretch out, give my toes more freedom, get off the bike, walk around. And in the new RC903s, there's added room in the toe box, both above my toes and to either side of them. So that's really a big plus. At the same time, there's no loss in the glove-like fit you get from the forefoot back that maintains the high performance efficiency between my feet and the pedals. If I want more room uh, in those areas on a three plus hour ride, I can certainly dial back the boas. The second big change gives me an even more efficient pedal stroke. While the heel is locked in very well and comfortably in the RC902s, the prior model, it's even better now in the new RC903s. It actually feels more tailored to my heels, especially from the middle of the heel up. I get an even better sense of being locked into place when I pull up and kick forward at the top of my pedal stroke. Yet I had no difficulty getting into and out of these new RC903 shoes, even with these changes in the profile of the heel cup. So the changes up front make them as comfortable as any shoes I've worn, and the changes in the back make them as efficient as any shoes I've worn. And they're both more comfortable and efficient than most. And it's hard to find both more comfort and more efficiency in the same pair of shoes. While I've not worn the new RC903 shoes outside on the hottest days yet, I never found the 902s to be hot, and they have the same upper. The change to a sock-like fabric at the base of the toes in these 903s probably makes them a bit more breathable. These RC903s also come in a men's wide width that's about three to four millimeters wider. I wear a European 43 cycling shoe in the standard width, and my casual shoe is a D width, so not narrow or not wide. They also come in a woman's shoe that has a different last or form, and my fellow tester Ayana, who has a long and narrow woman's foot, will be testing both the men's and women's shoes to see how they compare. All of that said, the new Shimano RC903 I tested aren't as wide or don't have as much volume as the same size Specialized Torch or Bond Traeger Triple X, both of which I rate highly for both performance and comfort. But I find the Shimano has more of a glove-like fit and transfers power more efficiently than either of those shoes do, at least for me. You can see in this chart how the shoes compare from heel to toe compared to other top-of-the-line two-dial models that we've tested. And in this chart, you can see how they rate on power transfer versus comfort. The best rated shoes have both a high level of power transfer and a superior amount of comfort. You can look more closely at these charts and read the in-depth reviews I've done for each of these shoes and see the prices and best places to buy them in the link to my review of the best road cycling shoes in the description box below. So what didn't I like about the new Shimano S-Fire RC903 shoes? Not a lot, to be honest. One thing, as good as these arch pad and insole combinations are, better frankly than most insoles you get from others, they don't provide as good a transition between the pad and the length of the insole as the specialized body geometry insoles that I use in all of my shoes. 
You also need to be mindful about where you place the crossover strap, that semi burrito strap at the top before you dial in the upper BOA. And at a price of $450 US, 350 pounds and 400 euros, it's also no bargain. But it's no more than other top tier road shoes from Spech, Bontrager, CD, and most of the other top of the model lines. In addition to the in the nose cycling red color that they were kind enough to make available for me and any of you, they also come in the distinctive S-Fire blue and in white and black. As I mentioned, even with the added room for your toes, the new Shimano S-Fire shoes aren't as wide as the new top of the line S-Works torch in the toe box. For me, that's a plus as I found the specialized torch too roomy for my size 43 shoes to get optimized power transfer. On the other hand, or perhaps the other foot, my fellow tester Nate, who wears the same size as me and whose feet are actually just a couple of millimeters shorter or narrower than mine, prefers the, the torches fit. And he can drop most anyone he rides with in those shoes. You can also link to our torch review in the description box below. You know, as with most shoes and cycling apparel in general, we tend to find and stay with the brands that seem to fit us best. But I prefer the last of the Shimano road and gravel shoes. Bottom line, if you're new to high performance road shoes and know that the proportions of your feet fall somewhere in the middle of the, the bell curve, I definitely recommend you consider the Shimano S-Fire RC903 shoes. I hope you found this video helps you decide whether or not to consider the new Shimano RC903 cycling shoes. Let me know what you think in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe to get more videos like this one coming your way. Thanks and look forward to seeing you again on the next video.